Hi, I'm Keenan Crane, and I'm going to talk about some work that we've been doing at Caltech on discrete connections for geometry processing. And what we're finding out is that by just slightly changing our mathematical perspective, we end up with algorithms that are not only more efficient, but also a lot easier to think about. So as an example of the kind of problem we're interested in, suppose somebody hands you a surface, like this bunny, and a set of special points or singularities on this surface. And they ask you to come up with a vector field that's smooth everywhere except for at these points. So you really want to be able to guarantee that if you look anywhere else on this surface, no extra singularities pop up. Of course, there are a lot of applications for this kind of thing. So maybe you want to design fur on an animal, or you want to control the direction of anisotropic shading, basically anything where you need local orientation information on a surface. Over the last 10 years, there have been a lot of really interesting ways of looking at this problem. But so far, there's no nice, simple algorithm that guarantees the vector field topology, and at the same time is really fast. But actually, it turns out this problem is really nice computationally, as long as you start with the right mathematical perspective and really stick with it all the way through to the end. So here's just a little sneak preview of what we're going to get if we take this approach based on connections. So we end up with an algorithm that does have this guarantee we're looking for. It's very simple, so the hardest thing you have to do is compute a spanning tree of the edges of your mesh. It's general in the sense that we can deal not only with vector fields, but also things like the cross field you see on the left. And it's very fast. At the end of the day, we just have to solve a single linear system. OK, let me give some background on connections on smooth surfaces. So here's a question that motivates the need for connections. How do we compare two tangent vectors that originate at different points of a space? This is easy to do in a flat space like the plane because we can just slide one vector over to the other and then compute the angle between two vectors or do whatever else we need to do. On a curved surface, it's not quite as obvious because there are a lot of different ways that we could slide one vector over to another. But let's take a look at this situation locally. So if we're on some infinitesimal patch of a curved surface, and we have a tangent vector, we could imagine specifying how this vector changes as we move infinitesimally in any given direction. Or in our case, we're just going to consider unit vectors, so we're going to ask, how does it rotate? And this is exactly the information that a connection specifies. More formally, a connection is an angle-valued one form, which means that we plug in a tangent direction and it spits out an infinitesimal change in angle. Of course, once we have this local information, we now can figure out how a vector changes along a longer path. All we have to do is plug tangents to this path into our connection and integrate the resulting changes in angle. And this process is called parallel transport. Of course, on a curved surface, there are a lot of different paths we can take to get from one point to another. And unless we were really careful when we defined our connection, there's no reason to expect that we're going to get the same result for all these different paths. So this idea of consistency is something we should really keep in mind as we try to apply connections to algorithms. In fact, a really useful way of looking at this idea of consistency is to say, what happens to a vector after we transport it around a closed loop? And in general, it's not going to end up back where it started. So we, we call this difference in angle between the initial and final vector the holonomy of the connection around that loop. <clears throat> in particular, if this loop bounds a region of our surface, uh, like this dashed line on the right, then the difference in angle, the holonomy, tells us what the curvature of the connection is over the region bounded by that loop. So for instance, every surface comes with a canonical connection called the Levi-Civita connection, where the curvature is just the usual Gaussian curvature. 
But in general, the thing to remember is that the holonomy around a contractible loop tells us what the curvature is over the region bounded by that loop. Okay, so now that we understand the smooth picture a little bit, we need to figure out how to compute with connections. So for one thing, it's going to turn out that a lot of the quantities we care about are naturally stored on the dual mesh. And what I mean by this is if we start out with a triangle mesh, like in the top row, every primal vertex is going to become a dual face, every primal edge becomes a dual edge, and every primal face becomes a dual vertex. So if we start out with this gray triangle mesh here, its dual looks like this black uh, mesh made of hexagons. And so if we put a single unit vector at every face, then a discrete connection is just going to be an angle on each dual edge that tells us how this vector changes as we move from one face to the next. And the right way to think about this is it's really a smooth connection that's been integrated along this dual edge. And just like in the smooth case, every discrete surface comes with a canonical connection, the discrete levi civita connection, which we can think of in the following way. Imagine you have a pair of triangles and you want to transport a vector from one to the other. Then you can unfold this pair of triangles isometrically in the plane, transport or translate the vector across the shared edge, and then fold them back into their initial configuration. So now if we want to write down some other connection, we can write it down relative to the levi civita connection. So if we write down an angle of zero, that means just translate. If we write down some other angle, that means translate across that shared edge and then apply some little rotation. Okay, so now that we know how to transport vectors from one triangle to a neighboring triangle, uh, transporting along a whole path is not very difficult. We just apply transport to each of the dual edges in our path in sequence. And again, you can really think of this as just piecewise integration of some smooth connection. So now, how do we define things like holonomy and curvature in the discrete setting? Well, actually, because we were really careful to use the same terminology for our discrete setup as we had in the smooth case, our definitions don't really change. So discrete holonomy is just the difference in angle after we discreetly parallel transport a vector around a loop. And discrete curvature is just the discrete holonomy around a region boundary. Of course, if we remove the word discrete here, we just get back our original smooth definitions. And that's because the discrete theory we're describing really is the, the smooth theory, except that we've integrated it over the dual edges and dual faces of our mesh. Okay. So how does all this stuff relate back to our original question of vector field design? Well, once we have a discrete connection, there's a really straightforward way to construct a vector field on the surface. Namely, we can start out with some initial vector in an arbitrary triangle, transport it to one of its neighbors, and then repeat this process until we've covered the entire surface. But there's a problem that we can run into here, which is depending on which connection we use, our vector field might not be consistently defined. So, for instance, if we walk around the one ring of a vertex, applying little rotations along the way, then when we get back to the beginning, there's no reason why the vector we end up with should be the same as the one we started out with. So we don't really have a consistent idea of what the vector field should look like at this point. Uh, so, for instance, if we use the levi civita connection, to construct a vector field, we're going to have a problem because the holonomy around any contractible loop equals the Gaussian curvature over the region bounded by that loop. And so unless our surface is completely flat, we are going to get these jumps in our vector field. And the solution to this problem and really the central idea of our algorithm is to say, hey, why don't we just compute a connection where the holonomy around every cycle is zero? Uh, and in fact, for the purpose of computation, we can just write down a nice small set of basis cycles and make sure that the holonomy vanishes there. In the smooth case, this is something known as a trivial connection. 